Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 24th. Wanted to do a quick market update and give you all the rundown of um, what's going on in the DGEN ecosystem as well as Farcaster. So I posted this graphic here just to give you all an understanding of um, the new apps and clients, the tools, tokens, media, and then some other things that I'm going to talk about up here um, that, that I find interesting and just, just happening in Web3 in general. First, what I wanted to start off with is just a quick market update, right? So what we've had over the last you know couple of weeks, let's just say, is you had somewhat of a top being created here in the S&P 500, um, basically an uptrend that resolved into a local downtrend. Now, what we need to find in this downtrend is um, how much further is it going to go? Where is it going to create its base before it potentially either resolves up higher or if it continues to you know grind down lower and lower, right? Um, one thing that I find interesting right now is something that Bob Lucas posted. And I'm a big fan of Bob, Bob Lucas, by the way. Uh, make sure you guys follow him on Twitter. Um, is that I think I think near term, uh, in terms of just you know local cycles, market cycles, um, we're probably due for a pullback, which we've had so far. Um, if you watch my previous videos, I've spoken about um, S&P 500 heading into 5,050 up to about 5,100, which is pretty much where we are right now. Uh, the moving average is right here, the yellow, which is a 20, and the green, which is the 40. So the 20 and the 40 EMAs um, on the daily chart are beginning to have their bear cross, meaning the momentum is shifting in the other direction, which is from a clear uptrend to maybe a possible you know, local downtrend, right? Now, we've often had these uh, over the last year, year and a half, for example, right here, where we had the bear cross price kind of grinds down for maybe a couple of weeks and then breaks out and then breaks out higher. Again, same thing right here. You had a bit of a bear cross where the moving average of the 40, which is the green crosses above the 20, which is the yellow price breaks down further for about, I think this channel was from late July up until uh, late October, right? So about, yeah, pretty much two months, two months of a grinding downtrend and then massive uptrend, right? So the question is, um, at what point do we effectively get out of this local downtrend that we have going and where do we bottom, right? Those are the two most important questions. Um, I personally think that you're, you're probably going to see another leg down, um, uh, but either we base at 4,800, 4,700, down here, or we create somewhat of a double bottom, build base, and then possibly push higher. But that remains to be seen, right? Over the next few weeks, it depends on macroeconomic conditions, um, how markets are faring. Is the momentum just not enough for us to push higher? Do we have to dig lower to find more buyers, right? And all this relates back to where crypto and BTC sits. BTC is in a very similar um, predicament like the S&P 500, but holding up much better, I would say. While the S&P 500 has broken out of its range, Bitcoin has you know, pretty much uh, been in a steady state of moving sideways, which is the range high of about 72, 74,000 to a range low of about 61, 60K. So this 12 to $14,000 range is something that we've held um, pretty tightly, right? Um, now, once we break out of that range, though, which which I think we have a higher probability of doing, I think that should take us somewhere around, you know, low 50s um, to maybe 50 flat. And I think this is where we're probably going to build some kind of base and then push higher into the second half of um, 2024. All right. That's my general thought process is that I do believe we're going to break down it's not 100% necessary that we need to because, you know, around halvings, for example, um, here's the last halving. The last halving, we had a very, very sort of tight consolidation, um, kind of like this. Very tight consolidation, as you can see, this is a 2020 halving. Um, and then we pushed up, pulled back, and then just went on a massive run. Uh, is it possible that this time, you know, we... Don't do that. Yeah, it's absolutely possible, especially given that crypto has already had such a massive run up, right? 
Um, but I don't think we're done with any part of the, um, I don't believe that we're done with any part of the larger bull market that's ahead of us. I, I think there's a lot of things still cooking. For example, we have the Ethereum ETF proposal, which is going to be, in my opinion, pretty massive. Um, and this is going to lead me into the next topic, which is, you know, my, my conversation about Farcaster, DGen, and Web3 and where that's going. So I think one of the most overlooked areas of the market is that um, if you actually look back in 2020, right, I want to show you guys something interesting. This is the part where BTC and Ethereum were consolidating right here. This is about September and October 2020. And I want to show you guys that um, similarly over here, which is the last um, halving that we had, right? Which is over here. Okay. So where is September and October 2020? That's right around here. Okay. This little area right here before BTC broke out. So why is this area so important? Um, I believe that when Bitcoin is really beginning its big leg up and the market goes full risk on, um, I think that money typically flows to other alternative, you know, crypto investments, which are higher beta, higher risk, right? And, and higher return, of course. And that is, of course, Ethereum. Um, Ethereum being the second largest market cap asset and, you know, pretty much a very versatile, you know, um, dominant asset uh, tends to from, as you can see, like, let's just say October, 2020 to appear around um, maybe sometime in November, 2021, it had a 1200% run, right? Um, and if you look at around the same time block of BTC, okay? So same time block of BTC, all right? Even if you took the November, 2021 run right here, see that? Um, BTC have put in a pretty, you know, substantial number of 548%, right? From, from that October, 2020 up until November, 2021. So again, October, 2020 in Ethereum up to November, 2021, Ethereum was a 1200% gain versus um, BTC around, you know, um, 550, right? So almost double. So why is this important? This is important because I think in pure sort of upwards, up only bull markets, Ethereum is truly the dominant asset um, relative to BTC, okay? Now, of course, you know, you can make the argument about um, other other coins, of course, like, like Solana, clearly um, from, you know, October 2020 to uh, November 2021, it had a 17,000% run up, right? But again, those, those assets were much smaller market cap back then. We're talking about a pretty large, substantial asset, which is something like Ethereum, you know, which ran up twelve hundred percent. Okay, so that in 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 an already like multi tens of billions of dollars market cap. So this is important because we are relating this back to what's the bigger picture, which is Ethereum ETF proposal. In the same way, Bitcoin had its ETF proposal, which was. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think triggered sometime, um, uh, I think it was triggered sometime over here. This is where that proposal, um, was created from BlackRock and it was accepted, I think, um, sometime in October. And then of course, BlackRock ETF launched right here. We pulled back a little bit and then went up further, right? So if you kind of look at that comparison to Ethereum, Ethereum has had its ETF proposal right here, okay? So we've had the proposal. However, we've not had the acceptance and the approval, which may come, you know, and give us this kind of run. And then once the flows really come into Ethereum, it'll show us the interest of how much money is coming to Ethereum, which may give us this kind of move, the final move, which I believe may come, um, you know, sometime end of this year, possibly 
you know, sometime middle of next year, right? So that probably brings Ethereum somewhere close to maybe 10K. So that, that's possibly a maybe, depending on how strong the, the Ethereum ETF flows are. If you go to farside.co.uk, you see these Bitcoin ETF flows. And generally, um, you know, over the past, let's just say a few months, they've been generally very positive for Bitcoin, right? There's been a lot of inflows for Bitcoin. Now, can we say the same about Ethereum? Quite possibly, right? I, I think Ethereum will be seen as the um, native smart contract platform asset, um, a lot of things being built on it. And I think the flows will be relatively strong if and when the SEC does approve it. And again, we don't have the approval yet, so I don't really know how that's going to go. So how does this all tie into what I'm going to talk about today, which is the DGEN ecosystem? So um, one thing I want to say is uh, Web3 itself, right? If you're not familiar with Web3, it's nothing but decentralized you know, ecosystems and social fi apps and uh, DeFi and basically all things related to the old way the world used to work, which is Web2. Now added to that, um, a on-chain, you know, uh, blockchain, fractionalized, you know, transactions, ecosystems, payment systems, etc. That's all Web3, built on top of Web2. But these are now new form, um, new formatted new companies and new projects that are starting up. And they all require a unique way of looking at the market. So one of the things that I've spoken about uh, numerous times is the project that um, is built on Ethereum, which is called DGEN, right? DGEN is just a L3, which is a layer three um, uh, project. L2s are nothing but, you know, scalability and performance that is supposed to help Ethereum. The L3s are even more substantial than that. They're even faster, even cheaper, even faster, um, and even high more, uh, more high performant, okay? So that brings us to the most important L3, which is the DGEN ecosystem, the DGEN token. Um, and this token has probably, you know, one of the most uh, underrated moats that are out there, meaning it is so deeply embedded into um, Warpcast where you see this tipping system, right? I've told you all about this tipping system where, you know, we all basically get paid in micro tips. Um, like for example, I myself earned about 40K DGEN tokens, you know, pretty much over the last month, right? Just the month of April. All these seasons right here are one month seasons. So, as the season started and we're all earning tips for being active on Web3, on Warpcast, um, and, and you know, trying to earn the DGEN tokens, this is a new way of looking at the world, which is the Web3 world. And this is all under the Ethereum ecosystem. So how does this all relate? Well, once I believe the Ethereum ETF proposal passes, which I think, in my opinion, is going to be inevitable. Um, I think that's going to start ramping up Ethereum prices. I think Ethereum um, whales are going to start buying into you know, more higher risk, higher beta, high return assets like DGEN ecosystem. I'm sure they're going to buy into base tokens too, right? Base has really great projects and DEXs and meme coins and all that for sure. But what base will not have Okay, and I've spoken about this before. What base will not have is um, base won't have its own token, right? It, it, it I highly doubt that a um, publicly traded company like Coin, for example, okay, Coinbase, which owns the base chain, I don't think they're going to create a base token. I think it would be too risky for them to do so, and. So that leaves us with um, DGEN, which is going to be the proxy bet of base, okay? So basically the way people will be betting on base 
like if you want to bet on the base ecosystem, is you just simply bet on DGEN because DGEN directly also benefits off base, right? A lot of the support of the DGEN ecosystem comes from base. A lot of the proponents of DGEN ecosystem are from the base ecosystem. And so if base doesn't have a token, how do people bet on base's um, success? It's the DGEN token. Right, DGen token is not only a meme coin in this situation, but it's its own L3. Uh, it's its own sort of proxy ecosystem bet on base. And there's many, many things that are positives about base, um, which are you know directly beneficial for DGen. So, for example, you know I think DGen itself will be listed on Coinbase, whereas base again, because it doesn't have a token, cannot be listed. So a huge positive, in my opinion, that you have to start thinking about six months, nine months, 12 months down the road. There will be more bridges built between DGEN ecosystem and L other L2s, right? Like right now, I think a majority of the flows, um, here's a article written by Xerox Basil. Make sure you check it out. So in this article, right, um, you will find there is a good amount of data. Let me see where it is exactly. Um, these are all base revenue. Yeah, see, he also talks about Coinbase listing DGEN, right? Coinbase has shown a willingness to list popular meme coins like Bonk, Doge, Shiba. Um, there's, there's many meme coins on Coinbase, by the way. And I think DGEN will also be seen the same because it started off actually as a meme coin. The token itself cannot be classified as a security because it started off as a meme. So I actually think that Coinbase will list DGEN token sometime in the future, all right? The growth of Farcaster, again, because Farcaster literally uses, right, DGEN token for tips, right? All of us get tipped. So for example, you know, here's a notification of mine just today, right? I got tipped um, 169 DGEN, you know, just for a comment. Or I got tipped. Um, let me see here. Uh, where's the other one? I think I had more tips. Let me see. There's always random people tipping me, which I don't really know why half the time. But sometimes they might find, you know, my um, my insight valuable. Okay. So here's another one, right? So over here, someone tipped me one one thousand DGen. We're simply posting my insights on venture capital. So the point is that these thousand, the 69, the you know, daily tips add up, right? For for someone like myself. And even though I'm not a big wig that's earning hundreds of thousands, but 40,000 is still a lot, right? 40,000 DGEN tokens uh, multiplied by this 0 0.03 is about twelve hundred dollars, right? I mean, correct me if, if I'm um, correct on my math or not, but that's, yeah, that's like, that's like 1200 bucks, you know? So, so the point is that this is going to be a very big thing for the growth of DGEN ecosystem and DGEN the token, the direct correlation of Farcaster growing, the direct correlation of base chain growing directly contributes to DGEN chain growing and being really successful. All right, so this is how you want to measure the future success and, and path of success for DGEN. Additionally, there's other things, right? Like I said, the base bridge is probably the most popular bridge for DGEN ecosystem right now. However, um, there's going to be other things that contribute to further growth for DGEN. For example, Ethereum mainnet whales, okay? Ethereum mainnet um, whales are probably the biggest whales in crypto, aside from like probably the Bitcoin whales, but Bitcoin whales don't really do anything, right? They don't go anywhere. They just hold Bitcoin. Like maybe they buy some runes or some, you know, other stuff on Bitcoin mainnet, but that's it. Ethereum, however, has the ability for Ethereum whales to move into base and from base to degen. But what if there's someday, you know, an L1 to L3 bridge, right? Where Ethereum mainnet can directly move right into DGEN ecosystem. That would be a huge game changer. 
Why would they do something like that? Why would something like that be built? It is simply because a catalyst like this, okay, Ethereum ETF proposal, and the price simply going up will make people take more risk, will make people bet on new and innovative things. And I think that directly contributes to de um, degen growth. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you know, in Coinbase itself, like I don't know if y'all use Coinbase or not, but I'm a pretty big Coinbase user. I've used Coinbase since like 2016 and 17. And, you know, the growth of Coinbase and the innovativeness of Coinbase is extremely amazing. And one thing I would say is that um, Coinbase is really good at recognizing where momentum is and recognizing what users want. And imagine, you know, the day where um, Coinbase itself allows uh, users to move from Coinbase um, ETH directly into L3s, like the DGEN ecosystem. That would be huge. Like imagine moving $500 from your bank account into Coinbase and then instantly being able to like snap of a finger, you move to DGEN ecosystem within the matter of a minute, two minutes, because you know, the DGEN ecosystem is really fast, right? It's extremely fast, extremely cheap. In fact, it's cheaper and faster than base. And it's definitely cheaper and faster than Ethereum. That would trigger a wave of money that you've never seen before. A wave of users that we've never seen before into DGEN. So now that brings us to DGEN. What exactly is on DGEN right now? Well, really not that much. I think there's a couple of meme coins that people like to bet on. So um, ATH, which is my favorite meme coin right now, um, Shout out to ATH crew, as well as uh, Cyrus, who runs ATH. I think there's going to be a couple of meme coins like ATH, which are going to be probably, you know, 50, 100, 300 million dollar meme coins. Currently, they sit at 3 million. Again, this is not investment advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell this. I'm telling you what I'm betting on and why I'm betting on it. And it's simply because the meme coin season is really what has kickstarted the last few ecosystem runs. You know, the dog with hat is what started a massive, you know, Solana wave of speculation. I think same thing is going to happen within the DGEN ecosystem. One of these meme coins will probably start a massive, you know, rally and an up move um, in DGEN. And that will directly be, you know, on the back of this kind of news, Ethereum ETF proposal, um, or approval, or Ethereum price is starting to skyrocket. So that is what I'm looking forward to over the next few months. So you have in the existence of meme coins. You also have, you know, DEXs like Frog Swap, which are decent DEXs. Like there's really nothing that special in these newer DEXs. Um, so I can't really say like, oh, Frog Swap or, you know, uh, DGEN, DEX, um, what is it called? Uh, D swap, this thing right here, right? Degen swap um, should be worth, you know, let's just say X hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think it's going to take something new, you know, good UI, UX, new um, concepts that are going to really, really trigger the success of the Degen ecosystem. And a um, couple of new things, of course, are going on, right? For example, I was talking about this on my Warpcast. By the way, once again, let me repeat this, which is um, that please do join Warpcast because this is where you find all the alpha. Everything that you're seeing on this video, I discuss pretty openly, like all through my casts, my tweets, whatever you want to call it um, here on Warpcast. Um, and I do it like every few hours. So you may see this video, I don't know, maybe once a week, twice a week or something, but Warpcast, I'm tweeting or, or casting or posting multiple times a day about what I find interesting in the market, what I'm buying, what I'm selling, what I'm um, looking at, what I'm talking about, new projects that I found, uh, new people that I'm following, et cetera, right? So the alpha is almost real time for you. So definitely join Warpcast. The invite link is below. I will send this invite link to you guys. If you do join, um, I can send you some free um, DGEN tokens through, through uh, if you do sign up through my invite link, okay? All right, 
So we have that. Then you have things like, you know, rounds.wtf. This is just a place where you can, you know, see how much rewards you've earned. They have different like pools where you can get awarded um, for different things, different contests, different contests that are that are being run. Right. So there's all kinds of cool stuff that that's being created. Um, Dracula, which is the other thing that I've told you all about, is um, my uh, posting mechanism of videos and shorts. This is kind of like your reels, right? Where people post Facebook reels or Instagram reels or YouTube shorts. This is what I'm doing posting on Dracula. I just post my thoughts. You know, I make videos like this pretty much every day. Um, I post funny videos or meditation videos or videos about life and philosophy. And this is a great platform because this is under the, the social fi umbrella, right? Social fi, in my opinion, is the big thing where Web3 is going to take um, by storm within the DGEN ecosystem, which is things like social fi, you know? The traditional way of Instagram and Facebook and YouTube monetizing off of creators, here, creators can basically earn money and earn rewards for posting and using these apps. Uh, and basically your attention and your time and your creativity gets paid, right? So I think this is, if you're a creator, a content creator, and you're watching this, or you want to get started, this is a great way to get started. Dracula, okay? And you get paid in DGEN tokens. Um, you know, I think it's a pretty phenomenal concept. I've also talked about how, um, if you look at Alex, um, What's the name, Alex? I forgot his last name. Let me see, Dracula. Okay. Um, if you see, you know, what Alex posts, you'll see that there's a creator fund and, and rewards that go out to Dracula users. Okay. So basically the, the fact that you use Dracula, you may just get paid and airdrop money now and pretty much you know for the foreseeable few months as the app keeps growing because again this is a very new app right and you can get paid um in airdrops or future rewards uh just for using this app same thing goes for um pearl a newer sort of betting system where you can make bets on you know if so and so person will get more likes or less likes than the proposed number and you can bet the amount of tokens that you may have, okay? So um, that and then jam.so is it's not available on browser, but it's kind of like Instagram, like static feed of pictures and stuff. Um, the other things that you could do on DGEN is, uh, you know, you can bet on new meme coins, right? You can also look at airdrops. If there's airdrops, you can just claim free airdrops. You know, I don't know what these airdrops are, but maybe they become something big in the future, right? Um, so you just get to claim these free airdrops uh, pretty much for really nothing. It's it's free, okay? So mint.club is another website. Um, another new project that's coming about is HAM. Um, HAM you can find here in the LP channel. Uh, it's, it's a pretty, you know, unique concept where what they're, First of all, they're basically creating another L3, right? Which I think is pretty fascinating. Um, I don't know why WordCast is slow right now. Um, but the point is that, you know, Ham is creating another L3, which is going to um, kind of be like the DGEN ecosystem, right? So the question is like, how do you, how do you value a new L3? Currently it trades at 35 million, and DGEN ecosystem trades at 370 million, which is a 10X. So that's a pretty solid way to value it. Maybe this thing 10X is from here. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just giving you guys insights of how these things are valued. All right. So that's another project. Um, and then what else? Uh, proxy swap. This is another thing that I was just talking to someone about. Uh, proxy swap is kind of like a newer DEX that's, that's coming up. I posted about this on my profile, but it's clearly, clearly a uh, WarpCast is not working right now. Uh, there's an issue, but the point is that ProxySwap is another DEX that's being created. So, you know, if it's 
better and usable and has, let's just say, more rewards, um, better UI, UX, right? So proxy swap may be one thing that you may want to be paying attention to, okay? And then, of course, there's you know things like NFT DGEN where you can buy um, uh, DGEN ecosystem-based NFTs. You can also check out DGentleman, which is another PFP-based um, NFT on the DGEN blockchain, okay? So I've gone through, you know, numerous products. And then of course, you know, there's Moonwell and Seamless. There's, there's really a lot of stuff that's coming out in um, the DGEN ecosystem. So I've talked about a lot, right? And you could see, I only started on um, Warpcast like somewhere in the middle of March. I knew about it last year, but I didn't really, I was too lazy to get on it. I wish I gotten on it early, but I pretty much, you know, got very, very involved end of March. And, you know, as you can see on my video, March 30th, I had barely like 19 followers. You know, I think now I have maybe like 500 and I had zero airdrops or zero tips given to me. You know, this month I accrued 40,000, right? So you are also capable of kind of making this, you know, making this kind of money or attention or, or creating this kind of content and adding value to WorpCast and finding unique projects. But the point is that you have to first be involved and active in the DGEN ecosystem. And all this stuff that's happening in the DGEN ecosystem, whether it's proxy swap or um, newer projects that are coming up or new integrations that are going on, you have to keep up with it because crypto itself is a full-time job and Web3 in and of itself is moving extremely fast. So I do my best to try to keep up uh, with everything that's going on and update you guys in these videos, but I can only do so much in terms of videos, right? You have to come experience it for yourself. You have to see the bigger picture of where, you know, the ETF proposal and Ethereum price is and how that's going to add value to DGEN ecosystem and uh, DGEN, uh, DGEN like specific projects like ATH, meme coin, et cetera. You will have to see that yourself. No one can convince you that this is going to be a successful ecosystem, but I believe it is. And that's how I'm betting my you know chips on DGEN. My goal is really to collect as much DGEN token and as much um, you know Solana and Ethereum uh, as possible by the end of this year, okay? That's my ultimate goal. And if I can be successful in that goal, then I think, you know, it's going to be a significant sum of money, hopefully by the end of this year, or, you know, sometime next year. But none of this is investment advice because as you guys know, and I know, crypto is very volatile and nothing is really guaranteed, right? So please do your own research. Please do manage your own risk. Don't come blaming me for some you know, coin or project I spoke about. Um, I'm not held responsible. You are responsible for your own actions. All I can do is show you the way of what I'm buying or what I'm looking at or projects that I'm testing out or, you know, um, NFTs that I'm, you know, interested in and buying that I find cool. That's all I can do on a daily basis. You have to do the actual work. And in Web3, I think it's possible for, for everyone to make money. It's just whoever wants to put in the work. All right. With that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you all enjoy this content. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Um, drop me a comment below on your thoughts. Um, and let me know if you like my insights on markets in general, my take on the DGEN ecosystem, Ethereum ETF proposals, um, and all that jazz. All right. Good luck, everybody. Take care. Cheers. And we will talk soon.